are we ready for the spiel? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Monday, July 19th for your weekly episode of The Copy That Show, where we are copywriters who talk about copy while drinking coffee and monster and tea and other questionable caffeinated beverages while we talk about copy and try to figure this stuff out. Before we get into this week's episode, which is about emails, I believe we have a special announcement from the one and only Sean McIntyre. See, like, what I wanted to do was be like, hey, and speaking of emails, today we're going to be talking about emails, and in okay. particular, my DIC or dick formula. And funny, I should mention the dick formula, you're going to get to see a ton of the dick on our Patreon, which is live! Like, I was going to go for a whole bit. You're in it, Rod. Okay, I'm sorry. We, we should rehearse these things next time. That's, that's the power of persuasive copywriting. But you're going to get way more persuasive copywriting tips, tricks, lessons, and other things on our Patreon, which is live now. <laughs> yes, this is a funnel. Uh, we have a bunch of live stream footage, and I edited those down. I did like 16 to 20 hours of live streaming about emails and writing emails and revising emails. That is all going to be bonus material that is going to be on the Patreon. Yeah, sign up for the Patreon at patreon.com slash the copy that show. The copy that show is would not be possible without the loving, tender support of Patreons like yourself. And then just like have a scrolling list for when we put this up on YouTube. I think that for being somebody in marketing, I'm I'm really good at plugging our Patreon. <clears throat> one of the things that people get hired, one of the biggest, most frequent copy jobs that are on Upwork is copywriting for email copy. Everybody needs to write emails. If you've ever looked at your spam folder, somebody wrote all of those. And it takes a lot of people to write a lot of emails and AI ain't gonna do it all for you. One of the things that every good copywriter should know is know how to write good or at least decent short form lift copy. When I say lift, it's a piece of marketing email copy that is designed to lift or bring the person from their email and lift them up to the landing page. There are many types of emails in copy. There are engagement emails, there are renewal emails, things like that. Today, we're gonna to focus specifically on marketing emails. This is, I think, a really good opportunity for two reasons. One, for people to get money on Upwork, and also email marketing copy is one of the handful of places where somebody on Upwork or a freelancer or anybody can actually go to the client and be like, hey, how did the email do and get real results? You can't really do that with an engagement email. You can't really do that with a blog post. You can't really do that with a lot of the stuff that you are assigned to write for money online. I see hot tub stream when in the corner of my eye. I, I, am, I legit think that at <laughs> some point, if we get a certain threshold of Patreon subscribers, we should all fly to each other and right, meet throw, up and do a Throw out a stream. number. Throw out a number. Make your problems, Sean. How about <laughs> when our Patreon support equals the amount of money it would cost to pay for a website for this show? And maybe Noah, our lovely, lovely editor, he could come in later and put in a real number, and I'm just going to go... And that's the number <laughs> that we are going to have as the threshold. <laughs> For the hot tub stream. So th that was my spiel. That, those are all the benefits of like wanting to get good at writing decent email copy. And one of the things that I really like to draw a lot of attention to is my dick or the dick formula. It's actually not my formula. I learned it from somewhere else. I don't really pay attention to the formulas that people like to use. Aside from my dick, which stands for disrupt, intrigue, click. And it is the simplest, most straightforward way to write good email copy that gets opens, that gets people to read it, and gets people to click. So we're looking at this email. Subject line, the post-election story no one's talking about. I love this email because it perfectly exemplifies the DIC formula. Dear reader, there is one post-election story that has nothing to do with Trump or Clinton. This is from 2016. So... That first sentence, immediate disruption. This has my attention. Trump or Clinton, this is applicable to what I'm experiencing in my life right now. But now that the election is over, every American citizen could get a once in a lifetime chance to turn a single $50 bill into an incredible fortune. You had my attention, now you have my interest, or in this case, intrigue. Then, boom, one link. Click here to discover what the mainstream press has completely missed. Regards, Joe Schreifer, publisher of Aurora Financial. This email, you have the first sentence, the first line, it disrupts. It gets somebody's attention. The middle line, it builds intrigue off of that disruption. And then, finally, click here to discover what the mainstream press has completely missed. It's a click 
with a little tag that adds intrigue. And that's the formula. It doesn't reveal the details of what it's linking to. It's trying to get you to go to that place. It builds intrigue. There's clear benefits baked in. There's clear fascination baked in that's going to carry through to the sales letter that you click through. This is a good email. And we know it's a good email because we have the results and this email sold over a million dollars worth of financial newsletters. Everybody is aware of and familiar with the dick and we can kind of move on from there. Maybe some, I have some questions. Yes. Talk to me what? about my dick. So when it comes to your dick, what counts as a disruption? This is actually something that I see people having the most difficulty with. There's a couple ways to start an email. Like, uh, Rod, start an email to me as though you were talking to me like a normal person. Uh, let's say it's about uh, that one thing that we did together that we promised never to talk about on stream before. Hey, so um, remember that one time that we did that one thing? Here's the consequence of that one thing. And here's why I'm emailing you about it because we need to uh, take care of that unfinished business. So how did you open that email? Hey, Sean, you remember that one thing you said? Immediate, open with a question. I have, you have my attention. There's less semantic or like meaningful content there, but you mm. instinctually knew based on whom you were talking to, what you wanted to say, how to get my attention and how mm. to get me to read based on this totally fake didn't happen thing that we totally said that we would never talk about. Like, for example, if I were to say, Luke, dear Luke, many people are talking about the history of hustling and bustling right now. Some people hustle and some people bustle, but I'm going to sit down and play video games for several hours. Would that be a disruptive email for you? Would that make you want to keep reading? No, because it, it would feel like you're broadcasting to me instead of you're talking to me. Like exactly. it's not personal. Exactly. And that's that's the the corporate attitude, the I am writing from the perspective of a business, as opposed to, hey Luke, did you notice that fight in the driveway? You know, questions are a good way to cause a disruption. It's it's not clickbait so much as the strategic elision of information or removal of information to get somebody to be like, Oh, I read that first line and or like the first few lines. I need to read the rest. It's good to like imagine as if you're actually talking with the person. Like just like imagine whoever is your ideal customer, like think of what they're like and then write your copy as if you're directly speaking with them. And that's exactly what Sean's saying. You're like, hey Rod, remember that thing we did, right? You're immediately like, oh, what thing are you talking about, right? <laughs> it's so much better. The disruption itself, it's like a higher level interest thing that pulls that, pulls the reader in and then the intrigue part is like a context clue that makes it relevant. Yeah, I think it expands on the initial like doubt or like the initial curiosity that you built with your disruption. We have an email from Rod. I have one from Domino's and one from Uber Eats. People make the mistake of thinking that like writing copy for emails is just like, oh, I need to write copy for these internet marketing people or like these like scammy ads and like, no, like Domino's has an email copywriter. Domino's. But let's look at this in the meantime. Subject line, the lifeblood of your business. Traffic is the lifeblood of your business. If you don't have new customers flowing in con consistently, your business will stagnate quickly. And in 2021's business climate, stagnate is just another word for fail. And that's why the brands that are serving the right ads at the right time on the right channels are winning 2021. Immediately, I can tell that this is like the disruption section. We are getting attention by talking about if you don't have new customers flowing in consistently, your business will stagnate quickly. And then here comes the entry part. They're using proven paid traffic campaigns to reel in quality leads and make sales. Oh, I would like that. What are they doing? What are these pay proven paid traffic campaigns? I am intrigued. In other words, if your ads aren't paying for themselves in customers, you might as well strike a match and set fire to your ad dollars. <laughs> Want proven strategies for turning your Facebook and Google ad spend into money in your pocket? How about paid traffic secrets from experts who have successfully invested millions into scalable ad campaigns? How about paid traffic secrets from experts who have successfully invested millions into scalable ad campaigns? Here's where to get them. 
www.digitalmarketer.com LP Paid Traffic Mastery. Talk soon, Ryan. What do you think, guys? Feels very PAS to me, like problem, agitate, solution. Or disrupt and treat click, you know, whichever. I wonder for people who might be interested in this, how effective this was at like, you know, producing that sort of effect we're looking for where it's like, oh my God, I gotta click this thing, I need this. I like that it's not hyperbolic. I like that it's subdued. It's not like you need to have this or you will die. It's a like, <clears throat> hey, if you're a, this person in this context needing this thing, here's a thing that could help you here because it's clearly helping other people. Everything is a Faustian bargain in marketing. You can dial up the rhetoric and go so hard and so hyperbolic but it burns the list. You know, you, you get more unsubs, you get more spam. Like, yeah, you get more sales short term, but you basically napalm bomb the people that you're sending emails to. And then conversely, you can dial down the rhetoric and then, yeah, like people will actually read your marketing emails almost as though it were engagement or copy, like, like, like content copy. And you'll get fewer unsubs but at the same time, you're, you won't see as many results in terms of sales or clicks. There's this constant trade-off going on and you as a copywriter sort of need to be aware of both. Mm -hmm. This email I think is interesting and I think it has a secret strategy going on that I think every copywriter that's watching right now should know. This email is a Facebook ad. If you copy paste yeah. this copy up to the talk soon or just take away the talk soon, the, the valediction portion of the email, you just copy paste this into a Facebook ad and test it. It's written such that it could work on both platforms. And guess what? If you write that way, you just made twice as much money for doing one times the work. One thing I've learned, and I've especially learned that we're working with you, Sean, is like to try and like use the byproduct of whatever you make. So I feel with this, like, I mean, I, I do gotta say this feels a little less email to me for some reason. And I can't really say why I feel that way, but you could definitely use this. Either you just copy paste it or you condense it or you expand it and use it in other forms, like as like a Facebook ad or as a banner ad. And like that's super useful. And what makes it a Facebook ad is it's one of two things happened here. Either they tested the Facebook ad, the copy worked, they copy pasted that into their email and then tagged on a valediction PS or <laughs> two, you have one copywriter who is on the hook for writing Facebook ads, PPC ads, email ads, all this. Very overworked copywriter working for Ryan Dice. Poor guy, poor guy. <laughs> or girl, or in between, or questioning, who knows? And that person has to make the most efficient use of their time when it comes to writing copy. So you write in such a way that, oh, this email, well, I can just take this chunk and also use it here too. That is my big observation about this. You know, just looking at this other email that Rod sent over, it's the same thing where it's, it's from Ryan Dice and it has the same sort of like the disruption. These questions, you know, intrigue, these particular things has two links. Here's a tactic, uh, it's called the link sandwich. Don't use it every single time, but for certain emails, if it applies, use it for some of them where you want a link in the first three lines, you want to link somewhere in the middle and you want the cl click here to get this at the very end. Are you a copywriting pro that can nail a hook and lead? Are you driven by the thrill of rapid growth? Are you analytics and data driven when you make decisions? Do you geek out on optimization and A-B testing? Are you extremely curious and eager to learn everything you can about marketing? If so, amazing opportunity. Anyone who is a copywriter is going to identify with those things. That that self-selection, the qualification criteria, it works really well. Let's look at Luke's email. All right, subject line, supercharge your life in seven minutes a day. I already know that that's going to get opens. So, like this is a, a good formula for like content copy, for uh, lift copy, for sales copy, get benefit in specific time frame. These are things that work. If you are able to successfully get a specific time frame, just attach it to something that has an implied benefit and boom, you're gonna get opens. The average CEO reads one book a week. That's another good way to disrupt. Startling fact, how many books per week are you reading? Ooh, ooh, love that. What about per month, per year? That's the disruption right here. If you always know when you have that pivot to a different section, like a different rhetorical section, if, you're doing this thing, 
Well, let me show you this thing. If you're ever reviewing or analyzing copy, if is always a really good transition word. If you're doing thing above, I get it. It's probably not your fault. It's hard to find the right books and make them make time to read them. I created a company called MentorBox that helps 65,000 paying customers every month by summarizing the key takeaways from history's best-selling books. That sounds like a product with some benefits in it. And then we have this little image of Ty Lopez on top of his books. He loves his books. <laughs> Knowledge. The price to check it out? Ooh, good question. Anticipating that objection, less than a fast food meal to read like a CEO. Interesting sentence. Yeah. One thing that I've noticed about rich people, about money makers, entrepreneurs, is that there is a frugality. And I think that frugality comes from something that I think is very natural and very human, which is there's an innate pain to buying. This is, I think, doing loss aversion. Like, yeah, the cost of getting this benefit is less than a fast food meal. So in your mind, you're going, okay, like, I'm willing to spend money on fast food. Of course, I'm going to be willing to spend money to be as good as a CEO. This line, I'm not even sure if it's grammatically correct, but that doesn't matter because- But Sean, grammar matters for copy. As long as it's comprehensible and works for the audience, it's fine. I, as an editor, would probably not change that. My impulse would be to change that, but I have to quash that impulse to be like, well, I see subtextually what it's doing. And that's a more important skill, I think, than being able to proofread something. That's right, less than a fast food meal, you can get access to 300 plus executive courses, video workshops with book authors, audio book lessons, check sheets, templates, and guides, MentorBox private community. To check out MentorBox for an insanely low price, click here now. I, I still feel a little bit of broadcasting here and there, but this feels somewhat like I'm getting an actual one-to-one -one email. Is there a name for the technique he uses in that second line, the how many books per week are you reading? I want to say it's like the opposite of the damaging admission where you're almost doing like this sort of like small like guilt trip shame thing where it's like how many things, how, like, how much of this important thing are you doing and you know the answer's going to be like not enough no matter how much? Well, I mean, I can't think of the name for this, so we should just invent our own name for it and then just refer to it as that from now on and then it becomes our thing. Oh, we'll, we'll workshop this. We'll, we'll come up with a name for it. This, or and arguably this, is all disruption. This is all intrigue. I don't think that this is doing a great job when it comes to intrigue because it's just like, like, what are we going to learn on, like, when we click here now that we haven't already learned from this email? Mm -hmm. Like, can That's you imagine, true. like, you read this email and then you click to the landing page and then it's a 40 minute ad for this thing that you're already ready to buy, as long as the landing page is also either direct to order form or like short form or like very clearly has like some like a button that allows you to skip the copy and just buy now. Uh, as long as you give people that choice, I think that's important. So here we go. We have an email. This is my inbox. Subject line: We see pizza emoji in your in your crystal in your future crystal ball. How do you guys feel about emojis and subject lines? Go for it. Yeah, I'm indifferent. I think uh, if you can make it work, go for it. Something fun like this, like it's pizza. I, I don't take pizza seriously. I take like, pizza very pizza seriously, man. <laughs> I'm the moderator of our copywriting. There was this big thread about emojis and emails and like the general takeaway was like, if you're selling like Rolex watches, don't use emojis in your subject lines. And like my gut reaction to that was like, why not? It's it's a luxury item, but also at the same time, you wouldn't think that you're going to be advertising luxury items via email anyway. And so like, you might as well test to see like if it has an impact. Worst case scenario, like you can just like segment your list, like do a 90-10 split test. And for that 10% mm -hmm. of people, maybe choose the ones that don't open your emails anyway and then like test it to them. And then boom, now you have data. Now you have like clear data showing that emojis and subject lines work. And then you test it to the rest of the list and then boom, now all of a sudden your sales go up. And what do you guys think of this email? It, it's very direct. This is pizza. If I'm getting email from Domino's, I know what it is. Like the understanding there, my, my sophistication with these things is high because I consume lots of pizza. And so when you say mix and match and you tell me the deal right there, I'm either gonna be interested or I'm not going to be. I don't know, it works for me because if I want it, I'm gonna click it. It's Domino's, you don't need to have 
two pages <laughs> of copy trying to intrigue people or entice people to click. So this is something that you'll see, and every copywriter should get good at this. There are graphically led emails, and you mm. should be able to have in your repertoire, have like the arrow in your quiver of being able to include a fetching piece of creative. This is the disruption, like the Sean's reward points order now. You have this image, which is serving as the disruptive component. Look at all this food. Look at it. It all looks mildly edible, just like Domino's. Domino's, mildly edible. Mix and match, choose any two or more items for $5.99 each. What items can I choose for that little money? Intrigue, order now, click. Domino's email copywriting is on point because they know about the dick and they use it really, really well. <laughs> Why do you think pizza delivery is in so many porns? There you go. Okay, guys, this is the fake end of the show. The real end of the show is going to be available to Patreon supporters like you. This is going to be available for free on Twitch for two weeks. Thank you very much for joining us today. Have a wonderful day. We love you, and we want you to make a ton of money. Use that dick wisely. Look at what's happening in your inbox. Look at the emails that you're getting, and try to find some emails where you think you can apply the dick method or the dick formula. Rewrite them in a better way, and then reach out to those businesses and tell them, hey, I rewrote your, your, your email. How about you test this? And then if they get good results, you probably have a next gig. Have a wonderful week. Go make that money. Thank you very much.